We are live on YouTube. I am your host, Rhino, because we've never had another host, and we probably never will unless I sell the channel, which in case, if you're interested in buying, we're talking like, you know, two figures, 10 bucks or so. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. But if the price is right, hmm. Yeah, right. Not sure what time it is right now. It's about 10 o'clock or so. And 9.55, sprinklers are on. Yep, that's right. We got Kryptonite. Drink check. Check, 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 check. All right. 12.55 for you. 9.55 for me. All right. We are going to do a live box break. 100 baseball cards. Plus one pack. Jumbo box. One and four contain a hit. Doubt it'll be me. I'll be that three of four. I can tell you right now, it's kind of cool they have a, uh, this is, I uh, know it's uh, Flare Ultra, Barry Bonds, Hitting Machines. I think this is from 96. I was kind of surprised to see on there. So I picked that one up because someday those inserts from the mid to late 90s might actually be worth something. Who knows? Hold on, I got one sock on, one sock off. I can't do this. Ugh, there we go. Here it is. And, and there it goes. Oh, shh. So, <clears throat> one thing I know we won't be getting in this, Bill Winnington. <laughs> they really, they really NASCAR don't sell a lot of NASCAR when they, wait, what? Huh? I haven't bought any NASCAR cards in... Probably almost 10 years. I only bought this to make a video. Just, you know, ten, five bucks. Got this card in here, which alone, probably on eBay, you can fetch at least a few bucks for. I was intrigued. So, I'm going to see how much crap is really in here. All right, we got one in here tonight. So, uh, Ferraris. Uh, that tournament is filled, and I think it's almost paid for from last year. I haven't gotten any. I haven't gotten any. I want to say 2009. Probably last year I bought any NASCAR cards. And that's when I was buying a lot of cards, buying and flipping on uh, Craigslist and Sports Card Forum. And I haven't sold anything in Sports Card Forum. Anybody else go on sportscardforum.com? I was uh, been a member there uh, for 2005 or six, so yeah, about 12 years. I've been on there. Uh, yeah, I haven't made a transaction on there and since moved to Modesto, so it's been a good four years, probably closer to five. Only like and only viewer. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. So. Actually had three on uh, Instagram Live to promote this thing. Yeah, to promote it, forget it. So we're gonna get to getting here pretty soon. Those of you join late, well, shame on thou. You know what I mean? Man, this hat is dirty, nasty. Right up my alley. What can we show off uh, between now and then? Oh, I know. Even though I haven't formally announced it. This is part, if you catch the video after it's not live anymore, you can just fast forward through it if you want to. Even though I haven't announced anything, I've been given or sent cars in the package still. We'll be doing another mail-in your chance to win something special um, this one is still hanging around John Mueller's um, 70 right uh, oh no that's a, that's a 74 74 olds so I just popped it enough to get out the IndyCar Johnny Rutherford kept that one in the package so that one will be entered 
All right, this one right here, still in the package. Al Pastor, aka Jose Navarro, and the Twin Mill Three. That one looks kind of fast. From Rico Singleman, aka Jesse Moreno, we have the Street Wiener. Have not raced this. Don't know what to expect. From Mike James. Rhino Rod. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what though. No, he doesn't. It's too low to the ground. I was gonna say he start he gets he's got a head start, but this this I don't think this slip right here he'll he won't go over the trigger. The start gate trigger. The blocks, if you will. And I'm interested in seeing this. This, man, I, I love looking at this. It just reminds me, take it back to the 80s, just looking at that thing. Volvo container. He's got that one. And then I'm going to I'm gonna put it on the track anyways. I don't care. <laughs> the Speed Trapper. So those right there. And then maybe right now the ringer of the whole thing, once once it does go up, the Dodge Viper Coupe, faster than ever's he sent in also. Awesome. This is the second faster than ever from 2006 he has sent in. Also sent in the Maserati, which I thought would be a heck of a lot faster than it was. All right, then we got a couple from Julius Harris. Had these for a while now. He just missed the deadline. 2004 Mustang GT. Love that one. And then the 2017 Pagani Wyra Roadster. Very cool because I have neither one. Uh, and then Gonzo, a.k.a. Mario Speedwagon. He sent in... Well, give gave me four. The Dagobah system. This one obviously will not be racing. Mad props. Eruption. That's what happens when I have too much spicy food. I have an eruption. Kick cart. Kick cart. And then he has sent in Skull Shaker. Sent in, he handed to me. So without even announcing, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve already. Right off the bat. Not too shabby. Uh We've also had Misfit cars that have been sent in. Haven't announced anything for that either. So, kind of doing a few, one thing or two things at a time. Like, for example, we had all these that were sent in. All right, man. Peace out. Have a good one. Mysterio. This could be a really good one right here. Black wall van. I can love this car. NWO. This I'm sure it's sooner. One point or another. I gotta look up the driver on that too. John Andretti. This one right here. This same car right here. Uh, Nick Deaver sent in <laughs> like 10 of them. And then this really cool Bedford Heart Toy. Heart Toy. Coca Cola van. Very cool. I noticed this live stuff when I do live stuff with the uh, sports cards, it goes, it doesn't get a whole lot of viewers. But tonight, live, we're going to be opening Walgreens 100 baseball cards plus one pack, which I can tell you is 1991 Donruss. Uh, 
trying to remember if this is series one or two, the yellow cream colored thing was can't remember. One of the series had green, green uh wax pack, and the other was that yellowish, creamish, whatever. Um uh, I can see a lot of crap in here too, but the element of the unknown. It also says jumbo box one and four contain a hit. Not sure what that means. On the back here, and this is from the Fairfield Company. It says this package is guaranteed. I think you're gonna be able to see that. To contain 100 baseball cards and one manufacturer sealed pack. One in four packages on average include a hit. A hit may include game used card, event used card, manufactured, manufactured, manufactured what? Autograph or relic cards. The products in this package have been purchased directly from the manufacturer or purchased from the secondary market and repackaged for retail sales by the Fairfield Company. Distributed by the Fairfield Company Division of Excel Marketing, 5501 Park Avenue, Des Moines, Iowa, 50321. The Fairfield Company, you can find them on uh, Facebook, the Fairfield Company, and on Twitter at the Fairfield Co. <laughs> Uh -huh. All right, so I'm going to adjust the camera somehow to try to uh, capture the footage. Can I not flip this back? Yeah, I can. I can hit that button right there. Yeah. I don't want my hip. I don't know if you heard it or not. There we go. That's not going to work out very well. Hold on, guys. If anybody's even watching, there we go. Wait, who just sent in this car? Now that I see it. Was this Mueller? John? Is that you? There we go, I think. Kind of a tough angle. Is what it is, though. There we go. All right. Thank God for tripods, right? Do 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 do. -do. Is anybody in here? Am I, am I doing this Han Solo? Insert cricket chirping noise. The Dagobah system. Excuse me. Mm, I'm not sure, but either way, we're going to start it. Now, I have seen, yeah, chirping. Michael, did you get my message on Face Space? I haven't been back on there. Let's see if you got it and replied. Okay. Did you reply back? <sighs> All right, here we go. 100 baseball cards plus one pack. Yeah, you were just the, uh, at the cutoff point. Um, so far, let's get an update. Bobby Yach, yes, paid, paid. Mike James in the mail. Nero's paid. Mike's paid. Deranged Dart paid. League is, I'm trying to remember who else did. Kevin Salmon did. I'll have to look at the rest, but I'm pretty sure these guys are going to pay. But if not, if not, you are the next in line. Somebody slips. Slips and falls and all that good stuff. So. All right. Now, I've seen these unboxed on... Uh, on here before and everybody seems to have a problem opening this maybe uh, they're they're meager weak and meager I don't know it is uh, it is glued on there rather well 
Yeah. It is definitely Kidding. Here, let me do this. There. I think I got through it better than they did. Alright, let's ski, 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 ski. Let's get that open. And let's see all the 90s junk I'm sure I got. Alright, we'll start things off. I was hoping this would be the die cut. I was almost positive it wasn't. We got Royd's Bonds here hitting machines from Flare Ultra 94. Hoping these uh, insert cards at some point, these mid 90s insert cards, the Digaba system, will be something worth, worth something down the road. Because I'm in it for the profit. I'm in it for the squirrel. Yeah, right. Anybody who collects cards and is in for it. In it for that these days is... I'm going to have to have a reality check. All right, let me move this and adjust it again. So I can kind of get in there. This is the same angle I did that one lot of the old sports cards. All right, here we go. Hey, we got a Clayton Kershaw. Hate the Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw from 2012 Tops. Uh, I had one of his rookie autograph cards that you pull from the pack actually autographed on the um, on the card. And this is what I was talking about earlier for those of you. Wait, oh no, I've only had two people in here. <laughs> um, when I was flipping cards on Sports Card Forum and on Craigslist and basically those two places because offer up and those weren't around but I sold a big old lot of cards and one of it had it of autographed and game used and one was an autographed Clayton Kershaw I thought nah this guy won't be very good Robert and Dino I don't know any of these guys this same thing 2012 who knows that these guys are even still around don't know and uh, we got Mike Viles? I don't know. I know it's Travis Hafner sliding into him, breaking up the double play. Next up, uh, Hong Hong Chi Ku, Hong Chi Ku, something like that. Hmm. Middle reliever looks like maybe. Yeah, did have 12 saves in 2010 for the Dodgers. All right. Then we got Angel Pagan. Uh, I don't think he's still with the Giants. Last I remember. I don't even remember what the Mets started with the Cubs. All right. Then we got uh, Jaime Garcia. Old school St. Louis. Uni's there. Spent a little bit of time in the minors. Who knows if this guy's still around? I don't. All right, now we're getting into crap. 89 tops. We got Mike Stanley. Catcher. Didn't Mike Stanley go to the I want to say he went to the Yankees and Jorge Posada ended up replacing him. Mike Felder for the Brewers, the Brew Crew. Wow, he batted a robust 173 in 1988 and 81 plate appearances. Steve Bouchel, third baseman for the Rangers. I still remember this stuff. It's ridiculous. I couldn't tell you what I had for breakfast. 
But I remember Steve Bouchelle, third base with the Rangers, and he did have some pop in his bat. Ah, here's an interesting fact on Mr. Bouchelle. Steve played three seasons at Stanford University where he was a roommate of Broncos quarterback John Elway. Gotta love the cool facts. They're not worth nothing, but... Ah, yes. Kenny Lofton. He basically... I always thought of him as Willie Mays Hayes. This is 1993 tops. Start off with the Astros. He broke the American League rookie stolen base mark in 1992 of John Cangelosi from the White Sox in 86. He had 50. Well, Kenny stole 66. He always reminded me of uh, Willie Mays Hayes simply because they were both fast leadoff hitters and played in the outfield for the Indians. This is the old school Indians. This is when they played at the, the Mistake by the Lake. What was that called? Was it Municipal Park? Even though the movie, and I recognize this, and I'm sure a lot of people did when Major League first came out, that they filmed actually filmed that in Milwaukee at the Brewers Ballpark. I forget the Fulton County. No, what for this thing? That's just the uh, Braves. Um, can't think of Brewers Old Stadium. Ah, Jim Corsi, former A. I don't. You remember him with the Marlins? He only played one year with the eight. No, no, he did. He played. Uh, wow, he played. <laughs> Sparingly in 89, 80, 89, 91 with the Astros and then back to the A's in 92. I don't really remember that. Ah, here's a guy that had a lot of promise. Hensley Mullins, third base, New York Yankees. This card was pretty hot for a while there in 89. Same year as they got no major league record. Ansley Mullins, Fileman from Caraco. Undrafted free agent in 85. Hmm. Look at him at third base of the future. Yep, he's supposed to be. Never panned out, though. Oh, look at this. <laughs> he doesn't look like that anymore, y'all. Sammy Say It Ain't Sosa. He's underwent the Michael Jackson transformation. Let's see, this is 93 tops. In 92, his first year with the Cubs. Started with the Rangers and then had three years with the White Sox. Uh, he only had eight homers in 92. His only real full season, meaning like he had 532 at-bats in 1990 at 15 jacks with the White Sox. He was a leadoff batter, at least... Some part of the time in 92. All right, 1994 tops here. Michael Tucker. This must have been his rookie card. Drafted 10th overall, 92. Kevin Brown. Uh, this guy... This guy, when he was on, he was on. He was on for more than he was off. Long-time Padre. Um, excuse me, long-time Ranger. Yeah, there he is. He played from 80. Well, he only pitched one game in 86 and won four games in 88, but 89 through 94. 21 wins in 92. I want to say uh, he started one All-Star game. Was it 92? I don't remember. Never really a high strikeout pitcher. Oh, wow, look at this. <laughs> Barry Bonds and Raphael Palmero. Good old Raffy. I did not take anything or whatever he said. So another thing, these two guys, they didn't have to take anything. They were, oh, wow, this is a traded card. That's right, 80, um, 89, let's see, 89 first year with the Rangers or 80? Was he traded during the season from the Cubs? He was with the Cubs. 
He was traded to the Rangers on December 5th with Jamie Moyer and Drew Hall for pitcher Paul Gilgis, Wild Thing Mitch Williams, Curtis Wilkerson, and Steve Wilson. Hmm. I would say that the Rangers got the better of that trade, even though Mitch Williams was... Uh, I remember him doing a whole lot with the Cubs. Well, actually, no, I take it back. In 89, he, he had a... No, it wasn't that. This, I'm, I'm off. Never mind. Sorry, guys. Right, here's old Wally Backman. The little small second baseman. The Mets for their run in the late 80s. Did bat 303 in uh, 88 and 294 plate appearances. 5'9", 168 from Hillsboro, Oregon. Next up, Floyd Yeomans. This is the highlights card pitcher of the month in July. I will say this, though. I don't know where they collect these cards from, get them from, but they're in pretty decent condition for, you know, this is what? Stupid set now is like 30 years old. 31 years old. Dang. It's ridiculous. This came in a box set, the highlights. This is from 87 Donruss. The regular set had black borders, and this one has blue. Carlos Martinez out of the rookies. It's like the photographer, first time photographer, and didn't center him in the picture, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe they just scooted him back. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Played in 87, part of the year, AAA Hawaii. Remember this guy had a little bit of pop in his bat. All right, next up, one of the ugliest, freaking ugliest sets ever. 89 score. Rookie Dave West. I hated this set. 88, their first go around in 88 wasn't nothing to write home about, but 89 is just friggin' ugly. Hey, look at this from the classic board game, Barry Larkin. Barry Larkin was the MVP in 1995 or 6 for the National League. And I believe he's since been inducted into the Hall of Fame. One guy who you never had his name associated with steroids. I mean, all around great player. I hated the 1990 Reds, obviously, knocking off the A's. Didn't see that one coming, but uh, the nasty boys were nasty. That's all I can say. And everybody else for the Reds contributed. Also from the 1990 Classic, this actually came in board games. This is a set that came in the Classic board games. Lance Dixon. I don't really have much of a recollection of him. The, I do recognize the name, but I don't have any... Uh, why was he even in here? He played th three games in his career, 0-3. Oh, oh, my God, he lost every game he pitched with a 7.24 ERA. What is he doing in here? What? All right, maybe he was yeah, Rick Wilkins, 1993 Fleer. Good old Rick. Don't remember much from him. Did last around for a while. All right, man, nothing shouts 90s like. And here's one of the, well, he wasn't a nasty boy, Tom Browning. Tom Browning pitched a perfect game, I believe, in 87. But uh, very good starting left-handed pitcher during his time. This is from 1990 Classic. In 89, he went 15 and 12. Up to that point in his career, 78 and 52. All right, Flair Tradition, I want to say. Oh, Ron Gann, I don't even really remember him with the Anaheim Angels. Who remembers those hats? Whoops. Two thousand. Oh, you even played a year, 1999, with the Phillies? I don't remember. Did not play in 94 when he went to the Reds. I thought he played longer with the Braves. 32 jacks in 90 and 91 and 36 and 93. Injured, did not play in 94. He 
He was a good hitter, though. What do we got here? 2000 team rookies. Jason Conti. Geraldo Guzman. Don't remember you guys. I'm sorry. Don't remember. All right, 1992 upper deck, Tom Foley. Uh, shortstop for the Expo. Z. Oops, sorry, Tom. Yep, not a whole lot to write home about, Mr. Foley. Next up, oh, look at, wow. It's coming full circle now. Bonds. Palmero, and now Roger Clemens. McGuire's got to be in here. Roger Clemens, 1992 Upper Deck. What's that say? That's an all-star game. Canton all-star game shirt underneath that horrible jersey. 134 and 61 at that point in his career with a 2.85 ERA. 1,665 career strikeouts. Not bad there, Raj. Ah, yes, Rob Deere. Home run or nothing. 88 tops. Couldn't stand the set. Still can't stand it to the day. Rob Deere, 33 jacks in 86 and 28 and 87. Look at that, 186 strikeouts led the league. Let's see, he was traded by the Giants to the Brewers in exchange for Dean Freeland and Eric Pilkington in 85. So that was a pretty good deal for the Brewers because I don't think Freeland and Pilkington even made it to the majors. I don't recognize them at all. All right, what do we got here? Hey, this isn't bad at all. And I recognize this guy, D.D. Gregorius, for the Yankees. Hate the Yankees, but... Well, man, I didn't realize he had been playing this long. So... 9, 12... Was 2012... Tony Jeff, 2016 was first year. I thought this guy was a rookie or like a second year player or something. Didn't realize he's been around for that long. Nonetheless, good card to have. All right. Andy Nezelik. All I remember is I'm going to flip this over. It's going to say no major league experience because I remember this card as I went through plenty of 89 Dauntners. Next up. Casey Jansen, the Blue Jays. This is from 2013 Tops. Another guy, I couldn't tell you if he... Couldn't tell. Apparently he was a, probably the closer, at least partial closer in 2012 with the Blue Jays. He had 22 saves. I couldn't tell you if he still plays or not. Looks like we got a Chrome. Blake Wood, rookie card, Bowman Chrome. I do not know, Mr. Wood. Blake Wood. From 2010. Never heard of him. Wouldn't even know if he's still around or not. Ha, ah, look at this. Ron Hassey, catcher for the A's, backup catcher for the A's. Behind Terry Steinbach. Not around. Thanks, John. Did you just get in here, John? Yep. All right. Since you got in here and I don't see anybody else in here, we're just going to go over these real quick. So this was a, this is from Walgreens, $4.99. 100 baseball cards and one pack. And I can already tell you the pack is 91 Donruss. I recognize it. Jumbo box, one and four contain a hit, blah, blah, blah. Got it for five bucks just for S and G. I mainly got it because this box had uh, 
1990s insert had Barry Bonds. This is the ultra hitting machines. Too bad it wasn't the die cut one. I had it on there and I thought, ah, what the heck? This will make a good video for five bucks. So I had that. You got Clayton Kershaw. Uh, Robert Andino. Don't even know if he's around or not. Uh, I don't know if Steinbach is or not. Not that I'm aware of. Maybe Miners. Uh, maybe somewhere along the lines of... I don't know. Robert Andino. Don't know if he plays or not. Don't recognize his name. Uh, Mike Aviles. I don't even know. Don't know this guy. Been so out of it in baseball the last several several years. Don't recognize him. Uh, Kong Chi Ku. Don't recognize him either. Yes, catchers are good managers because they're almost like a second manager when they're playing days. Look at Jake Taylor. Angel Pagan, I know he at least uh, he was with the Giants recently, I want to say. If he still isn't, I don't know. Avails second base. Is he still in the majors? I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Mike Avails. Avails. Hong Chi Ku. Don't know if he's in the majors or not. Angel Pagan, I want to say, still with the Giants, but probably not. Matter of fact, I think he did move on. I think I heard that last week at the game. I was at the Giants game, first time at 18 Park. Jaime Garcia, don't know if he's still around or not. Old school St. Louis uniforms. And then we get into older crap, Mike Stanley. And maybe you can... Uh, uh, confirm or not, I want to say Mike Stanley was catching for the Yankees in the mid-90s and basically was replaced by Jorge Posada. Remember Stanley? I thought Stanley was a... He ended up making the All-Star team or something. Catching for the Yankees. Garcia, okay, so he's still in there. All right. Yeah, uh, Mike Stanley. Uh, excuse me. Mike Felder, Steve Bouchelle, which I remember he had a little pop to his bat. Third baseman for the Rangers. This is an interesting fact on here. I had mentioned uh, Steve played three seasons at Stanford University, where he was roommate of Broncos quarterback John Elway. Interesting fact. Another interesting fact is I need to plug in this phone again. Hopefully it'll at least keep the charge where it's at now. I didn't really want to plug it in because it's kind of in the way. All right, then we got uh, Willie Mays Hayes. I mean, Kenny Lofton. Good old Kenny. Here's another guy that... Uh, he never, I don't remember him ever like really retiring. He's like one of these guys that just wanted to keep playing, and but finally they people stopped signing him. Jim Corsi. I don't remember what the Marlins. I just remember his time in the eight with the A's. Here is supposed to be the, if you can confirm. Yep, Lofton. Oh, and Garcia, that Garcia pitcher too. Yes, Kenny Lofton, I think, played for everybody twice. Hensley Mullins. Was supposed to be the third baseman of the future for the Yankees. He was supposed to be big stuff. This is Ricky Card in 89. No major league record. Look at this. He doesn't... Well, that's funny because we got... Well, I'll get to it later. So keep this in mind. We have Barry Bonds in this box. Mine's dying too, so we'll see. So, so don't look like this anymore. And look at his stats. I remember him with the Rangers and then White Sox and the Cubs. Nothing nothing great until I think, was it 94? I think he had a good year. Michael Tucker. There's a guy who had a decent career, Kevin Brown. These are 94 tops.
Raphael Palmero. So we've had Bonds, <laughs> Sosa, and now Palmero. It's still pretty decent. So he pitched in three games in 80, uh, 1990, and he lost all three of them. He had a seven-point test. Yeah, they might as well made the Philly fanatic. 93, Fleer, Rick Wilkins. Dominique Wilkins' brother. I might mention that. Um, hate seeing this. 1990 Reds. Anything 1990 Reds. And that sweep of us in the World Series. Tom Browning pitched a perfect game in 87. Dago Boss system was a fairly decent pitcher. Then we got Ron Gant, which I don't remember him with the Angels. I I thought he played. I uh, mentioned earlier. I thought he played longer with the Braves than what he did. But he had one in 1989. Was even shortened to 80, 75 games. One, two, three, four, five full seasons. And then I remember him being injured in 94 with the Reds his first year with them. And then three years with the Cardinals. Well, I don't remember him with the Phillies. So that's, I'm surprised. Yeah, Gerald Wilkins' brother. Mm -hmm. A couple of schmucks I don't remember. Jason Conti and uh, Geraldo Guzman. Wait, can't... ID Canty doing morning news? Wait, 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 wait. Kidding me. Come on, let's go back here. Jason uh, Conti? This guy right here? Or Gant? Wait, Gant? You got me confused now. Gant? So confused. Ron Gant is doing morning news. Does he like the new uh, Jason Seahorn? Tom Foley, Lay Expo. And look at this. So we've had Bonds, Sosa, Palmero. The juice box is getting more full. We got Roger Clemens. Uh, Tom Foley. So Clemens is in there too. And then home run or nothing, Rob Deere. And headlights. Interesting fact. He was traded, or in exchange, he was traded... In exchange for Dean Freeland and Eric Pilkington of the Giants in 85. Never heard of those guys. I don't think they even made it to the majors. So the Brewers won that trade, although, you know, know where that went. Here's a guy who's a current player that I actually recognize his name. Obviously playing with the Yankees, Didi Gregorius. What I didn't realize is I figured he was only like a second, maybe third year player. But, nope, he's got a little bit of mileage on him. This is like his, he had half season. He had a cup of coffee with the Reds. He had like half seasons uh, and 13 and 14 with the Diamondbacks. And then finally 15, 16, and then 17, now 18 with the Yankees. Wow, is your head growing by touching these cards? Uh, another guy, Andy Nazelic. Only remember... This card, because no major league record rookie card back then. Here's another guy I never don't recognize, Casey Jansen. Apparently was at least a part-time closer, if not the closer, in 2012 with the Blue Jays, saved 22 games. Another guy I don't recognize. Oh, this is where we left off, Blake Wood. Rookie card, Bowman Chrome. Uh, more than likely, this guy isn't around anymore. Born in 85, so he'd be 33. Mm, not quite 33. He's born in August. 
And that's where we picked up with. All right. Ron Hassey. Backup catcher with the A's. Long career for Hassey. Primarily as a backup catcher. Did hit 13 jacks with the Yankees in 85. 272 career hitter. Next up, Tommy Henzo. Tommy Henzo. Don't remember much from him. At all. Ah, then we got Kent to Colby, the Submariner. Good old Kent. Longtime Phillies reliever. Pitched 90 games in 87. His arm probably fell off. Saved 179 career games up to that point. Yep, started off with the Pirates. Longtime Pirate, and then with the Phillies. I believe he was with uh, We Are Family, right? In 79. Part of that World Series team. Oh, yeah, I remember when the Phillies. Next up, oh, just another set. 91 score. Just sucks. The design is sucky. Jeff Robinson. Doesn't ring a bell, really, to be honest with you. All right, we got 91 Fleer. Adam Peterson. Don't remember him. Not much to remember either. From Long Beach. Born in Long Beach. Home in Vancouver, Washington. Definitely had that late 80s, early 90s porn stash going, though. And that's... That's apparent there. All right, then we got Daryl Hamilton with the Brew Crew. Maybe he was a leadoff hitter. He betted 295 in 1990. Mike Felder, but he's a dazzling speed as reserve outfielder. Maybe not. Next up, Nate Jones. This is a newer card. I think this is that 2006, 17 tops. Nate Jones, this guy's still around. Oh, they got war on this. <laughs> they have war stats now on the cards, huh? That's how out of it I am. Next up, Matt Latos. Is this guy still around? That's right. He started with the Padres. That's what I remember him from. Had a pretty good year in that uh, 2010 season. 292 ERA in 31 games. 14 and 4. Matt Latos no longer around. I didn't figure as much. Doug Sisk. Good old Doug and the old 1989 flare. Got a little bling going there, Doug. Yep. He was. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is a funny stat right here. Doug was considered for 1976 UM U.S. Olympic rifle team. Oh, I can sleep better at night knowing that. Thanks, Doug. Man, talk about you got to talk about digging deep for dirt or something to put on there. That's horrible. All right, one of my favorite sets, probably my favorite set from the 1990s. Kind of reminds me of 75 Tops. Hey, here's a Hall of Famer, Tom Glavin. Uh, Matt Latos, yes, he went uh, from the Padres to the Reds. Tom Glavin, 
Hall of Famer pitched in the steroid era. Well, look at that, 17 losses in 1988. 4.29 ERA. <whistles> Don't worry, Tom. Things are going to turn around, buddy. Almost became a hockey player. Guy that played in the steroid era, but was never name was never associated. Used to like Levin. Went on to the Mets after all those years with the Braves. What year? It's 1990. This is 90 tops. Oops. Colorful border, 1990 tops. Yeah, I believe he was drafted by the LA Kings. Next up. Oh, crap. We got another Glavin. Uh, this is 2002. At this point, it was 224 and 132. He was a one, two, three, four, five, five time 20 game winner. Uh, his rookie was 88. Um, 88 Donruss. I don't think he had any cards that came out in 87. Um, yeah, are you talking about rookie year? Yes, 87. Had a buddy of mine in uh, junior high, high school, he used to pronounce his last name Glavine, and it drove me wild. Dude, he's Glavin, not Glavine. Next up, hey, Pudge. Another Hall of Famer, Carlton Fisk. Hit one of the most identified home runs of all time at Fenway Park. When he was shooing the ball fair. Look at the stats on here. 323 jacks up to that point in his career. Which I don't think he played that. Mm, I'm trying to remember what year he retired, but I don't remember. There's an interesting fact right here, though. At some point, he had some speed. I know the all the stats on here are hard to see, but in 1972 with the Red Sox, he had nine triples, tied the league. Nine triples. Darn good player. Motioning ball fair running. Yep. That would be the one. Hey, look at this. Another Hall of Famer. Too bad this wasn't during his playing days and not the managerial days. Frank Robinson. I forget. Did he? Has he? Is he still alive? I don't remember. Long time manager as well as player. Fisk, Homer in 77. That was a 77 series against the Big Red Machine, I believe. I think he passed away, too. John, funny question. Now that I got you on here. You send this car in? The um, Fair Lady 2000. Just trying to remember who did it. Yep. All right, cool. That's what I thought. See, my memory's not too shot yet. So I'm going to write John Mueller. So I've actually accumulated a lot of cars in the package for... The next mail-in, which hasn't even announced yet, and I think that's like the 13th car. All right, that's funny. We had, uh, getting back to the cards, we had Glavin, Glavin, then we had Fisk, Robinson, and Carlton Fisk, 89 Donruss, for me. Cool. Well, I'm still going to enter it, because uh, I... I'm not, a car was for you. That's okay. I'm going to put it in the next uh, mail-in for you as your name. And then obviously with those cars, I keep them and then mail out a super or something to whoever wins it. So I'd rather have it loose anyways. So win-win. So we got 89 tops, 89 Donruss. 
Next up. Ah, Jim Leland. I don't know. I I couldn't tell you if Leland is in the Hall of Fame or not, but if he's not, he will be uh, at some point. Detroit Tigers. I mean, this guy. They don't. They don't make a. They don't make Jim Leland's anymore. Talk about putting Bonds in his place at spring training in what was it, eighty nine or ninety? Never forget that. And I remember watching on a YouTube video not that long ago about how Bonds thanked him for doing that. I mean, he didn't take he didn't take you know what though, Jim Leland. Yes, darn good manager. Aha, look at this. Barry Zito. One of the guys, look at he's got the old porn stash going. Man, I cannot believe he played out his whole seven year contract across the bay. Especially how bad he was. I mean, look at his stats with the A's in 02, 23 and 5. 16 and 10 is last year there, and then 11 13 first year with the Giants, then 10 and 17, 10 and 13, 9 and 14, and only 3 and 4 in 2011. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He played two more years. I don't remember the last time he was in the majors, though. Barry Zito. Had a nasty curveball when it was on, though. It was nasty. Couldn't tell you the last time, though. He was in the majors. Flipped off Van Slyke in playoff game. Told him where to line up. Yeah. Big fan of the Pirates. Yeah, I like Zito, but when he was with the A's, and I'm, he was one of those guys that they let go, and I was kind of okay with because I just had a feeling, you know, he wanted too much. Giants signed him to some ridiculous contract. Um, I was I was okay with it. I wish they would have kept. I mean, they got rid of. Him. They got rid of, or I shouldn't say got rid of, because I think he just signed with the Cardinals. No, no, no. It was a trade. They got Dan Heron. Dan Heron. And that obviously worked out in our favor uh, as Mulder was riddled with injuries with the Cardinals, unfortunately. The Dinkelbot system. Um, no, he didn't. That's what I was saying earlier, I think, before you came on here. These guys didn't need to do that crap. They didn't need it. They were talented. They didn't need to do it. Um, and then Hudson went over. I was glad. Wish his career would have ended a, a little bit different than how it did, as he was my favorite all-time A. But the rest, I mean, you know, Tejado's gone. Giambi, Giambi is just a schmuck. Can't stand him. Never will. I booed him, actually, when he came out to present. Throw 12, 13, something like that. 2012, 11, I don't remember. It's funny because there's a guy in, in front of me that had a Giambi jersey on. I didn't care. I booed the heck out of him. Can't stand him. There it is, 1990, that's his Series 1, 1991 Donruss. All right, here we go. Neftali Perez, this is from 2010. I guess is, he's not around anymore, but maybe, I guess. He'd be uh, 30 right now, so not out of the question. Here's a guy for a while there. I don't know if he's still around or not. Aramis Ramirez. Yeah, he's with the Rangers. And does he still play? Um, Felice? 
I bet Aramis doesn't play. This is what, 2008? Had some good numbers, 36 homers in 2004, 31, 38, and 26. <laughs> Remember this guy, Bob Walk. Funny seeing him out the porn stash there. As he got here, plus that mullet, Bob Walk. Horrible last name for a pitcher. Don't want that last name. He was okay in his days. Yep, with the Pirates. All right. Oh, man, no collections complete without a Rolando Rooms card. And a rookie card to boot. Are you going to the Cubs or somebody? Oh, here's the Indians team leader card. Not a whole lot of team leading going on there. Rolando Rooms. Oops. I think he went on to play with the Cubs. Let's take a look here. They're leaders. Look at Joe Carter and Brett Butler. Pat Tabler. Carter led him 29 and 121. Brett Butler. Guy was a pretty decent player. Pretty good leadoff. Uh, wins, Tom Candiotti on the front. Uh, that's Necro. That's got to be Necro right here. This guy looks like he's the manager. Looks like that should be the pitcher and he's the manager. Nope. That's got to be... Uh, 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 who was the older one? Phil, Phil Necro. He pitched till he was 766. Uh, who was the catcher? Uh, I don't know. Pat Tabler. Don't know who they're, man that's not their, that can't be their manager. It's gotta be the pitching coach. And Phil's looking at him like, dude, you know how old I am? All right, 87 tops. We got, oh, great, whoops. The lovely bunning. I mean, look at look how he's holding the bat. I don't remember that. That's horrible. Bruce Benedict Arnold. I'm here. You there? I'm here. Bruce Benedict Arnold. Eighty seven taps. Then we got Rick Reed. Nineteen ninety score. Steve Sachs with the Yankees. One of the Dodger greats, I guess you'll say. You'd say. Had some good years with the Dodgers. That's what I say. Braves traded bats and balls. <laughs> That's funny. And there's another guy pitched for the Dodgers, Jesse Orozco. Yeah, he was there in 88. That's right. Uh, also a long-time Met. Ken Patterson. Couldn't tell you anything about this guy. Other than he looks like he'd rather be somewhere else on this. Was 6-1 and one in 89, but he had a 4.52 ERA. 
Now we're getting into a lot of junk. It looks like I need to flip this over. We got Chris Getz. Chris Getz some. Is he still around? It was 2012. Um, Chris numbers don't have the wow factor, but he makes contact. Thanks a lot. I played for a while, kept beating catchers out back when Braves bad, yeah. Chris Getz doesn't play anymore, didn't think so, especially with those stats. Then we got uh, Marlon Bird. I don't think he plays anymore, does he? Did hit 20 jacks in 09 with the Rangers. Marlon Bird, I remember mostly with the... Uh, didn't he play for the Indians? Maybe not. Nice catch right there, jumping up in the Ivy. Ivy Kelvin. Hey, we got Prince Fielder. In a rare moment, him getting a round ball and calling off the pitcher. Did drive in 141 runs in 09 with the Brew Crew. For a minute there, he pretty darn good hitter. Hit 50 jacks in 07. 16 stolen bases in his career at that point. Huh. Next up, Jared Weaver. What happened to this guy? What happened to him? Um, I would go with the big hurt, even though his stats in his prime fielder was better. I would still go with the big hurt because of the longevity. More better con he had better contact. What happened to Weaver? He used to be does he still play? He was career record 82 and 47 at that point in time. He doesn't play anymore. What happened to this guy? I'd forgotten about him until I saw this card. Did he get hurt or something? I'm sure his brother doesn't play anymore. Did Jared go? His brother went to Fresno State. Dang it, what was his name? Uh, he nowhere near in comparison to the numbers that Jared put up. Northridge, home of Simi Valley. Got in trouble at Subway? You gotta be kidding me. That's why he doesn't play anymore? Man, I'm definitely out of the major league picture. Lost me? Still here? <whistles> it's funny, because if I, if I lose internet connection, it doesn't tell me. Still here? I turn on the Wi-Fi now. Hello? 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 Is that better? Is that any better? Doesn't seem as good on the Wi-Fi as it did. Everything moves real slow on here. You guys got me still? Jared Weaver. You got in trouble at a subway? You're talking like subway... Subway... Uh, Fast food sandwich is or Subway, New York Subways.
better now. Oh, crap. Mickey Mantle. That's cool. This is considered a hit. Card number seven, of course. Mickey Mantle. Nice. Oh, man. I was thinking he got in a fight on a subway train and hurt his hand or something. How did I know about that? Whatever happened to him, though? Interesting fact, Mantle ended his career as a 298 hitter, almost 300. Never really thought of him as average, batting average. I'd say more, I would, you know, off the top of my head, if somebody said, oh, what's Mickey Mantle's career batting average? I'd have said, yeah, maybe 280 at best. Nope, 298 hitter. Still 153 bases in his time. Mm, the dig about system. Mickey Mantle. Very cool card. See if I can flip this on uh, five bucks on offer up and get the money back. Miguel Cabrera. Triple crown. When do you win the triple crown? Does Miggy still play? That's how out of the loop I am. I remember he tore us up, though, in the playoffs. 2000 and... What year was it? Two years ago? Two years ago, what? When he hit for the triple crown? Hey, look at this. Here's another Hall of Famer. Mariano Rivera. Hundred and three saves. Was this his last year? It's amazing. In 2007, he had an ERA of 3.15. And all the seasons he pitched up to this point, I'm not going to count 95 as a full season, but he only had one, two, three, four, five out of the about 15 so years. Yeah, Rivera is solid. He was lights out except for, thankfully, the 2001 World Series. I love seeing the Yankees lose. Couldn't stand them. So, I mean, there's a lot of decent players in here. John Burkett. Burkett for a while there, a couple of years. I believe he made the All-Star team. Might have been uh, All-Star um, starting pitcher, John Burkett. This is uh, 80, 91 Donruss. Randy Reddy. Padres, 88 tops. Pretty good year for him that year in about a half a season. Whoa, bling master. Look at the bling. Jeff Reardon making some bucks. I can afford the bling and the beard. Look at that look. Yeah. Yeah. Blown the lead. I got to come in a pitch. Reardon was pretty solid in his day, though. <laughs> Led the majors and saves in 85 with Le Expo, 41. I believe at one point he broke the saves record. <laughs> I remember I got his rookie card one year. Now he'd been around for a while. Came up with the Mets in 79. This is 88 tops, so he'd been, been around for a little bit. I 
I got his rookie card at a card show once in a penny box. 80, I think his rookie year was 81 tops uh, as far as cards. Rookie card was 81 tops. Back then it was listed in Becker for about 10 bucks. All right. Everybody knows Rod Booker, right? Rod Booker. Wow. Career minor leaguer. Wow, he's related to Hall of Famer Jackie Robinson. Vizelia. One, two, three, four. Yeah, definitely a career minor leaguer. Well, I mean, I get the I guess at this point he was only twenty five still. Wait, no. Heck no, he was thirty. What's this guy still doing around? I don't know. Mark Wollers. The closer for the Braves during that time. Mark Wollers. This is right after his rookie season. Now, uh, it's Jackie Robinson. Mark Wollers, good pitcher during his time. Ah, from the MVP series, we got George Taco Bell. George Bell, a feared hitter. Yeah, Wollers, a basket case. George Bell, a feared hitter, feared hitter in his day. 87 for the Jays, 47 and 134. Makes you wonder. And they also had, uh, let's see, in the Blue Jays had Tony Fernandez, they had Lloyd Mosby. Uh, and I think not long after this, George Bell started to fizzle out. 87, how did they not win the National League East that year? Because it was uh, it was the Twins for the West became eventual World Series champs in 87. Who was it in the East? Red Sox? 87, who won the who won the American League East in 87? Was it the Blue Jays? I don't remember. All I know is Twins beat the Cardinals in the World Series that year. I want to say in six games? Maybe it went to game seven? I don't remember. All right. Was he on the A's team? All-star team of Blue Jays? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Here's Tim Raines' MVP card. Probably one of the least appreciated players in the 80s and into the 90s. Definitely. I mean, look at that. Hit 330 and hit 18 and 68 with 50 steals in 87. And he missed uh, missed the first month because of free agency contract dispute. World Series team of Blue Jays? No, no, I think Bell was with the White Sox by then. No, he wasn't around, though. Dave Martinez. Who is he managing? Ah, crap. Who is Dave Martinez managing these days? Martinez, pretty gritty player in his day. Who does Martinez manage? Ah, the Dodgers. I knew it was somebody. All right, next up, Greg Gross. Pretty gross card. Pretty gross stats. He's hit, uh, according to this, seven career jacks, but only, only he hit one in 87 and no homers in 83, 84, 85, or 86. In uh, very limited plate appearances. Don't know what he's still doing around. Must have been a hell of a pinch hitter. I don't remember. 
Gray Gross. This guy looks like a bird. Mike Griffin. Don't remember him. He looked like a peck, 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 peck. Somebody go get the bird seed. Mike Griffin's here. What a bully. Minor leagues, minor leagues, minor leagues, minor leagues. And finally gets his chance. An 88. Damn, this guy's 31. Calusa, California. I never even heard of that. I live in California. Calusa, California. Must be the most populated bird state or bird city. White. Well, good kudos to him for sticking around and making it. Next up, John Davis. Yeah, I don't remember you. And 27 games, 44 innings. He had a 227 ERA, 5 and 2 record. Started off good. And then fizzled, apparently, or never. I don't know. All right. One more 88 Donruss here. Jerry Reed. The famous singer who sang, Eastbound and down, loaded up and trucking. We gonna do what they say can't be done. We got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Watch that bandit run. That's what Jerry Reed is known for. Maxwell is his middle name. Next up, Danny Darwin. Danny Darwin, he was, this is 92 tops, had a long career. Actually, uh, was tied with the ERA leaders in 1990 with a 221 ERA with the Astros. Hmm. Danny Darwin. Long-time Ranger and Astro spent the bulk of his career in the Lone Star State. Next up, Rich Rodriguez. I only remember the name. Ah, uh, look at what we have here. Dennis Oil Can Boyd. I never knew the story of how he got the nickname Oil Can. Don't know. In the mid-80s uh, with the Sox, it was his heyday. Oil can boy. Oh, great. Another one? Thanks a lot. Here's another product I ripped open a lot of. 1993 Donruss. Trying to get the Diamond Kings that became an insert. Bob Tewksbury. If you look, is this, wasn't it this that if you, you had to hold it just right and it had this like you can see Donruss spelled out counterproof card, counter uh, counterfeit proof card. Tewksbury sixteen and five with the Cardinals with a two one six ERA ninety two. Wasn't he drug problem? Tewksbury? Oh, Dennis Boyd, oil can. I'm pretty sure it was oil can you're referring to. Juan Bell. Two Bell. Three bell. Don't remember you won. Sorry, amigo. In the 90s, Tewksbury. Hey, look at this. Pasquale Perez. Jerry Curl. Did not pitch in 86. Doesn't say why. Pick.
bet you that starter jacket would be worth money now. All right, so a few more 90s, or, 80, or excuse me, 80s crap to get through. Here's where it all changed. Cards changed with this set right here. 1989 Upper Deck. They were going for what? A, got stuck on 285 HWRE. Nineteen eighty nine. This is where it started at all. Dollar packs for cards? Heck no. I ain't paying that. Mark Thurmond. Don't remember you. Hey, we had Tom Foley or yeah, was Tom Foley, right? Earlier. Yep. So we got uh, Tom earlier we had his ninety two upper deck. Yep, no gum. And now, Tom Foley's 89 upper deck. That's funny, because he's playing the Dodgers here in L.A., and I guarantee you, I recognize the wall and the big old foam home run line. This is San Diego. They're playing at San Diego right here, and they used to have their um, banners and stuff up. Playing in San Diego there. At... Uh, Jack Murphy Stadium. All right, let's see what we got here. It's like 1990 Flair. Bo Allred. I remember the name. Don't know anything about him. Ah, great. Another one? So that's two doubles. Two Dennis Oil Can Boyd, 1993 tops, and now two Jim Corsi. Great. Ah, look at this. Stew. We got a stew. 93. For a while there, one of the most dominant pitchers in the American League. He's a longtime Ranger. It's on and start off with the Dodgers. You know, you look at his stats, it's almost like it's kind of amazing he he stuck around. Was a 20 game winner in 87, 88, 89, and 1990. And then kind of started slipping a little bit. But man, for a while there, Stu was the man. And I'll never forget watching him against the Blue Jays pitch a no hitter. And then later that night, watch Fernando Valenzuela. And I don't remember who he pitched against, but pitched a no-hitter. They're the only time that's been two no-hitters on the same day. I watched both of them on TV. Forget who Fernando's was against. Did he have boys problem any time? Uh, maybe in his, maybe when he was with the Rangers, he might have. But I think he straightened it out, pretty sure. Dave Stewart, great pitcher. Chris Carpenter, he's still around? Remember her. Long time pitcher. 21 game winner in 05. Don't know what happened in 2007 8. Must have been hurt. ERA leader in 09 with a 224. I wouldn't think he's still around. Yeah, because he's born in 75. This guy's older than me. He's got me by quite a bit. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, he's got me by what? A year and about, he's got me by about 20 months. Don't think he's around anymore. All right, next up. Oh, crap. I don't even know how to pronounce this. Brian Bogusevic, 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 Sevic, Bogusevic, crap, I don't know, this is 2013 tops, doubt he's still around, could be though, just never heard of him, 
Yeah, 41. And then we got uh, Jorge Polanco. Also the 2017. He might still be around as this was his... His debut in 2014. Getting down to the nitty-gritty here, we got uh, Jerome Williams. Pretty cool. Got the pink glove there. I'm assuming that's uh, for breast cancer awareness. No, I'm 41. You're 47? Hi, ah, you got me. All right, 2015 tops. Another guy that, you know, guy that chipped away in just lengthy career. I don't know if he was a rookie. Kind of remember him with the Giants. All right. Let's see what we got here. Kansas City Royals team card. Take, take long for that team to collapse. Made it surprised they even went, yeah, they went 81 and 81 in 2016. They uh, beat us, the A's, in the wild card playoff game to get into the playoffs in 2014. And that was really the last year I was a fan of Major League Baseball. The big bus system. Two thousand fifteen won the title, and uh, two thousand they lost in two thousand fourteen to the Gigantes. I'm not going to say Giants, even though I just did right now. Fifteen won it. Two thousand sixteen they still managed to go eighty one and eighty one, I think. And seventeen they fell off. Hosmer went to the Padres. <laughs> yeah, that would have been great. That was my favorite player growing up, George Brett. Spike Owens, 87 Donruss. Spike Owens. Spike Owen. I always remember him as being Owens. That's funny. Whoops. All right, let's see. We got uh, Anthony Des Desclafani. Don't know. Nine and five. Fifteen and sixteen. So seventeen. If he's still pitching, this is only his fourth year. Spike Owen. He wasn't Owen, he was Spike Owens, right? That's one of the few cards that got a big old printing flaw and crap on it. Shane Raleigh. Massimino. <laughs> And he's using a Rawlings glove. The Telltale logo. Crap year in 88. He went 8 and 16. Ah, here you see who he's pitching to. Lance Parrish. For a while there with the Tigers. Uh, darn good catcher. I don't even remember with the Phillies. 244 career jacks. Made his home in Yorba Linda, California at that time. He could have been the real housewife catchers of Southern California in the OC or whatever back then. Ah, crap. Mike Sosha. Sosha is <clears throat> Does Sosha still manage the Angels? Yeah, Parrish just faded away. Mike Nova Sosha. Does he still manage? He's from Upper Derby, Pennsylvania.
Jose Guzman. Bet you that starter Rangers jacket's worth something. Ah, uh, we saved the old guy for last. Jamie Moyer. Man, he's like, he's young there. You talk about a guy who gritted it out. He could have easily been cut back then. Wasn't very good. But somehow, some way, he's a native of Pennsylvania. I didn't know that. Somehow, some way, he just found a way to hit the spots and get people out. Young Jamie Moyer there. This is what he was. Uh, WWE 62. This is 89. I'm do a quick little math. He was 27. Ah. When this card came out, 89. All right. Apparently, there's 100 cards right here. Paid $4.99 with, with four. See if I can throw them on offer up or something and try to get that five bucks back. Or is it five bucks I'll never see again? Should I open this? Uh, he might have been. Um, I know Carney Lansford was. Um, maybe not from Pennsylvania, but Carney Lansford was on the College World Series. Uh, Sean Burroughs. What happened to him in the majors? He just disappeared. Um, maybe Sheffield? I don't remember. All right, guys, should I open this or should I throw it away or should I sell it on offer up for $1,000? Win instantly over 2,000, 2 million prizes. Is it too late? What's their website? <laughs> oh, boy. Win a trip to the Baseball Hall of Fame and $10,000? Wow. Lansford was third base. Maybe I'll save this for uh, either another video or do on Facebook Live. I doubt anybody who comes and watches this video sets an hour and 40 into it. Jesus. Just to open up 100 cards? That's ridiculous. Walt White, yeah, Walt White second base. So it was uh, Steinbach. If we're talking like late 80s uh, during their 89, 88, 89, 90 World Series. Steinbach catching McGuire. First base, second base, Walt Weiss. Shortstop. Um, uh, Tony Phillips. So Tony Phillips. Why can't I think of the shortstop? Um, Scott Brocious. Third base, Lansford. Uh, left field. Was Conseco in left field? Man, I can't remember anymore. He's a right fielder. Uh, Ricky. No, Ricky was with the Yankees. Uh, who was out in center? Um, part of the time it was, uh, what's his face? Uh, oh, man. Uh, Felix Jose. Um else was out there center field for the A's in those days Stan Javier etc etc yeah I can say it goes on right Nice. 
I have a bunch of sets from the 80s, 90s, and I think it's time to start weeding them out. What am I going to do with them? They've been boxed up in here forever. I did sell a factory set of 1992 score on offer up for 10 but No, was it 12? No, it was 12, huh? Was it 15? 10 or 12 or 15? Um, and then I sold... I have 1990 Donruss baseball bests that I was going to... I thought I had it sold for 10 bucks for each, the National League and American League, but that fell through. Um, I bought... 1993, um, 1993 Tops factory sets with Derek Jeter's rookie card for $9.99. I bought two of them, $9.99 a piece at Goodwill, and I flipped those for 20 bucks a piece. So bought both total of 20 for 20 and sold for 40. So good, easy profit there. The Dagobah system. And then if you have seen the, uh, Vintage stuff that I uh, I did live. Excuse me. I bought that for ten nine eighty nine and sold on offer up for twenty five. It sold quickly too. I was surprised. I thought it'd stay on there for a minute. I. Uh, What I do with it? Damn it! Where am I? Ah, here it is. Crap! I got. Uh... Yeah, there you go. Looney Tunes upper deck. Nice. I got. Uh... I still have not posted. I got a lot on. On offer up. It's been a year now. It was during summer of last year. Um, and I got a Dale Jr. hat. I just sold it yesterday. If anybody saw the golf clubs, <laughs> I dumpster dived out. Somewhere in my neighborhood was moving out. And on top, I was walking, uh, nightly walk, and uh, came across their dumpster, and they had a golf club set. I mean, it was old. I mean, but it's pieced together. It's just missing a seven iron. Um, dug out of the trash, and then some kid who is going on to college, looking to get into golf, uh, bought it for twenty bucks. And then there another lot of uh, cars that I'd bought last year. So they threw in a new Dale Junior hat, and I sold that also to him for ten bucks. So it was just stuff that got thrown in, sold for a total of thirty. And then this was also thrown in there. I just listed this tonight. Mark McGuire starting lineup from uh, 2000. Packages beat to hell, but the figure is in mint. Threw it on there for five bucks. I thought somebody might jump on it. Maybe it'd be better if I just take it out of the package. I don't know. It was worth a pretty good deal back in the day, but they just threw it in there. All right, here's the thing, too. Let you guys in on it. I want to try, since I should have some extra free time. Here's another thing. I've been just looking, going off another tangent. Just buying stuff at Goodwill. Um, recently, just buying it and then trying to flip it. We got uh, this for, I'm trying to get it in there. $1.99. Uh, wall ledge bookshelf target I wonder what they had it marked marked that in their store let me try to peel this off so i got it for a buck 99 let's see if i can peel this sticker away without ripping the package stupid goodwill stickers are strongest crap in the world for some reason in terms of sticking to stuff oh wait there we go kind of Oh, crap. Ha, 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 ha. You got to be kidding me. This is funny. There's a dollar ninety nine. 
That's scandalous. They could see it plain as day on here. A dollar forty-eight. A dollar forty-eight. They got marked down to, and they they. That's funny. That's that's scandalous. That's that's something else right there. That's pretty funny. All right, so we know we got the traveling car here sent in by the Kibitzer, a.k.a. Kenny, a.k.a. Um, Not Your Dad's Garage on Facebook. We'll be going up against the current King of the Misfits champion in a non-title matchup, the Dodge Viper RT-10. Sometime this weekend. And also, what I want to do, the Dodge Viper RT-10 is going to put the title on the line this weekend. And I want to do it live. But we'll see. He's going to do it against, yep, what I opened last night. Sight and smash against that Firebird in there. It will be a title matchup. The title will be on the line this weekend. Probably Saturday. This isn't a faster than ever. Even though on the... Maybe not. Right here. What do you guys think? This car has never raced before. <laughs> Look at this. The, the paint on this thing is immaculate. Whereas the Dodge Viper RT-10 is jacked up. And I'm going to be honest with you. I, I bought this... It was what twenty three bucks? Was it twenty three? With uh, including shipping, twenty three bucks to be shipped to me. I'm gonna try to flip it for like forty. Yeah, the car is way better than the launcher. Oops, I just uh, decreased the value. So the title will be on the line. Sneak preview. Yep. Rolls well. Title match. Put in the books. The Firebird versus the Dodge Viper RT-10. Actually, what should do is... Uh, hmm. Some kind of moves to the right a little bit. Right? No? Yeah. I don't know. I think it's going to do well, though. I think it'll do well. Um, maybe I'll do... Maybe I'll do that first and the winner of that in a non-title matchup against Kenny's car. And then see who wants it, and I can ship it off from there. We we'll shall, we shall see. Ah, this thing keeps popping open now. Look at that bubble wrap from that Firebird. But yeah, I got a, I got a lot of diecast to clear out. I need to make, I want to make room in the garage. See the collection. Best of yeah, it'll be first car to win three races. So it'll be kind of like uh, how we did. Um, what do you call it? The last one I just did. I can't think right now. We'll do uh, mm. when I did. Shoebox versus Cadillac sixteen. Raced them in one six and then two five, and then flipped them. 
back to 2-5, vice uh, flipped, reversed, inverted. And then back to 1-6 um, if need be. First car to win three races. So maybe I'll do that first and then uh, whoever wins that non-title matchup against Silver Bullet, Large Charge, whatever you want to call it. Truck Series will begin after the YouTube Cup NOS Series. The YouTube Cup um, will run first. They'll be at Lowe's next. That'll be next week. So look for that coming up soon. I need to finish the standings. Um, we'll race Lowe's, and then we'll have the All-Star Race. We'll get more into that. And then uh, I haven't decided what the last four tracks will be. I can almost guarantee you for now I'm going to scrap Darlington until the until the uh, off season and try to get that perfected a little bit more. I want to do Talladega, which will be using 3D Bot Maker's three wide start gate. Um, I want to do that. I want to do uh, Dover using 3D Bot Maker's uh, two lane banked red turn. I don't know if he's come out with that on his 3DBotMaker.com yet or not on his uh, Etsy store. And then Daytona under the lights. And then probably. Uh, Probably do Bristol. I think that's what the lineup will be. We shall see, though, but uh, should be fun. Should be a good time. Whoops, fumble. All right, guys, I think that's it for me. We're almost at the two-hour mark. Yep, I want to do Daytona as a night race again. And then uh, once YouTube Cup, once NOS series are done, I'm going to do a truck racing series. Uh, don't know how many races yet. I have to calculate again how many trucks we've got. I think it's somewhere along the lines of anywhere from 10 to 15 have been entered so far. Uh Still doing the King of the Misfits, and I got so many loose cars to go through. I've been doing it on Instagram. I thought it would go quicker than what it is, and it's hard because I don't have a permanent track set up. I always have to come out and set it, reset it up out in the uh, driveway. I would like to get something permanent here in the garage. However, it will not be a quarter mile. The length of the driveway will not uh, cover that 20 feet, 7 and a half inches, unfortunately. Whoops. But uh, I will continue doing buy-ins. Helps me get rid of cars from a family member who is done with the hobby and they're not in a... You know, not like I got to just dump them all right now. This is a way more fun way for me than just throwing them on offer up. It's going by pretty slow because just last couple of months I haven't had time. The Ferrari one should be fun. Looking forward to that. That will begin as soon as I have collected all the payments. And then for next season, YouTube Cup. Run out of the kitchen to the garage. <laughs> yeah, that, I guess that would work. Laundry room to the garage. Uh, but for next season... There will definitely be changes. I guarantee you, YouTube Cup will have to be split. There's just way too many cars, and there might be there might be a NOS split. We'll have to get into that at some point down the road. Um, I might even with the in terms of that Kings and the Misfits I was talking to you about. I got so many cars to race. I might just just un un untelevised un videotape not videoed. Um, just go through go through a bunch of them and get the fast ones out of there and then just have one you know um, 
get down to say like go through 100 cars knock it down to or let's do it in terms of uh do 120 cars knock that down to um so that'd be what six that's uh you know 20 heats knock it out of 20 cars or something then do a video on it i don't know i don't know but i just need to get through get to this stuff to where i can get all this stuff out of here just a ton of crap and i'm just all about i'm not even about packaged cars anymore and any of that stuff except if it's a super i like to keep it on there at least for now and those might even come out of the package at some point Uh, in terms of Indy, the Indy cars, I'd like to do that as a semi-league, like the truck series. The truck series will probably be abbreviated, maybe four races in the season. Uh, come back with the Indy cars, and I can guarantee you, the thing with the Indy cars is, you know, they, they're going to be bumping and banging their open wheels. At some point, their axles are going to start to bend just a little bit. So they're not, not going to roll true like where a NASCAR would. Hold up for a lot longer. Never found a super. Last super I found was in a grocery store called Sabart. It was a 67 Camaro. Found that back in, what was it, February, March? That was a good one. I still... Got this up here. Still a heck of a find. I just wish it was in better condition. Like, how did somebody get this? Opened it. It's crazy. Love this thing. Just wish it rolled better. I don't even think it would. It wouldn't make a scale quarter mile. No way. Very cool, though. Had a Publix. All right, guys. It is now midnight here. Six minutes till midnight. I wasn't expecting to be up this late. Damn. Oh, well, it is what it is. I got to get to bed. Hopefully do some racing tomorrow. We shall see. I always think, oh, yeah, I'll go on live for, for a minute or two. And that ends up being all night for a while. It's all right, good. It's all fun. At least the charge is held up longer on the phone this time. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. I'm out. Um, yeah, as soon as that Ferrari tournament fills up, payments are in. It's a go. And look for the new the YouTube Cup and the NOS Racing coming up next week. At least the YouTube Cup and the NOS after that. And... Uh, Got a lot more unboxings and all that other stuff. So for now, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you at the next one.